Hello, my name is Jonathan Cuthbert, and I am a technical marketing engineer in Cisco's intent-based networking group. In IBNG, I directly support solutions such as Cisco's SD Access, and I am the author of the SD Access CVD, or Cisco Validated Design. Today, we are discussing LISP instance IDs. LISP, or the Locator Identity Separation Protocol, is the control plane protocol used in Cisco's SD Access solution. The LISP instance ID is the command line construct behind the user interface element we call SD Access Virtual Networks. In this video, we will correlate these two items together using information gleaned from the command line. Here's the agenda for this video. We'll begin by introducing LISP instance IDs, what they accomplish, and how they are used. Next is a discussion specific to LISP Layer 3 instance IDs, and then LISP Layer 2 instance IDs. Finally, I will show you how to use the CLI to determine the instance ID. This will be useful for other videos on this channel and for general troubleshooting knowledge. Lisp instance IDs. What are they? How do you use them? A Lisp instance ID maintains a unique address space in the control plane. What does this mean? An instance ID can be thought of similarly to deploying multiple instances of a traditional routing protocol. For example, Configuring EIGRP Process 100, EIGRP Process 200, and EIGRP Process 300. Each of those processes has their own control plane communication independent of the others, and each has their own routing table information separate from one another. These remain completely isolated unless you explicitly leak between them. LISP instance IDs work the same way. In LISP, control plane information is separated and marked using the instance ID in the control plane packets. This provides separation for mappings, map cache, list databases, and other list constructs. And here's the really important part and how it works. Each instance ID is associated with a VRF, that's a routing table, or a VLAN, a switching table. So what differentiates a LISP Layer 3 and Layer 2 instance ID? A LISP Layer 3 instance ID is associated with a VRF. There are two ways to see the output of your configuration, which is done using either the old style or the new style commands. Depending on your platform and your code version, both command types may be supported. The new style commands are preferred, and you'll see why as we discuss LISP Layer 2 instance IDs. What makes a LISP Layer 2 instance ID? These are associated with a switching table, or essentially a VLAN. As you can see, there is no old style command for LISP Layer 2 instances, and that's why the new style command is preferred. It unifies the command structure for IPv4, IPv6, and Ethernet at the same time. So the command looks like this show lisp instance id the instance id number and then the protocol ethernet ipv4 or ipv6 we have vrfs and vlans along with lisp layer 3 and lisp layer 2 instance ids these are the concepts that have been introduced so far let's put it all together we start with a physical device and we carve that into different routing tables or different vrfs when an interface is enabled you configure it to forward for a given vrf VRF is not explicitly defined, that interface is forwarding for the global routing table. When the interfaces are SVIs or switched virtual interfaces, they have a corresponding VLAN. For example, interface VLAN 1022, which is a layer three construct, is associated with VLAN 122. That's a layer two construct. And this is how your VLAN becomes associated with the VRF. The VLAN is associated with the interface VLAN that is forwarding for a given VRF. Let's look at it in reverse. This is how your VLAN becomes associated with the VRF, or to say it in other terms, how the LISP Layer 2 instance ID has a correlation to the LISP Layer 3 instance ID. The VLAN is associated with an interface VLAN that is forwarding for a given VRF that is deployed on a physical device. Let's look at how we can use the CLI to determine our instance ID so that we can run verification commands. To use the verification commands, you need to know the instance ID. Well, that's mostly true. LISP verification commands have quite a bit of flexibility. You can either use the instance ID or you can use the associated routing and switching table or what's known as the EID table or endpoint ID table. We're going to use the EID table commands to determine the instance ID so that we can later run the instance ID style commands. Ultimately, both these command styles will produce the same output though. So why are we using the instance ID variations? Instance ID commands are more commonly used as shown earlier in the video as they unify the command syntax. Instance ID commands are also preferred as they correlate easier when looking at the full output of the LISP configuration. I will pause for a moment to allow you to take a screen capture of these commands. 
All right, now let's look at the live output of these commands. Our live demonstration is shown on a Catalyst 9400 series switch. This switch has been provisioned as an SD access fabric edge node, and multiple VNs have been configured in the fabric site where this edge node is deployed. Let's begin by looking at the VRFs that have been provisioned. We can do that with the command show VRF brief. Here we can see two user-defined VRFs, campus and guest, along with their associated IP protocols and the interfaces. We can see that the campus VRF, which is the focus of this video, has been associated with interface VLAN 1034. We can use a quick verification command just to confirm that. That command is show running config interface VLAN 1034. Looking at this output, we can see yes, this interface has definitely been configured to forward for the campus VRF. Interface VLAN 1034, the layer 3 construct, is associated with VLAN 1034, the layer 2 construct. With those two pieces of information, we can now use our EID style commands to determine the Lisp instance ID. We'll begin with the layer 3 instance ID. The command to do that is show Lisp EID table, VRF, our VRF name, in this case campus, IPv4, and we're going to filter this output to include instance with a capital I. From here, we can see our layer 3 Lisp instance ID is 4099. Using a similar command, we can determine the layer 2 Lisp instance ID. That command is show Lisp EID table, in this case VLAN, our VLAN number, 1034. This is Ethernet, and again we're going to filter this output to include just instance. Here we can see our Lisp layer 2 instance ID, 8195. With this information, we can now use the instance style commands. Again, we'll begin with layer 3. The command is very similar. It is show lisp instance ID, our instance ID number, in this case 4099 IPv4. Now there is quite a bit of data here, and much of it is really outside of the scope of this video. What I want you to see in particular is that we can see the instance ID 4099, and we can see the EID table, the VRF it is associated with, campus. Go ahead and control C break this, and let's do the similar command to look at layer two. So that command is show lisp instance ID. In this case, our layer two instance ID is 8195 ethernet. Again, there's quite a bit of output that's well outside the scope of this video. But what I would like you to see is the instance ID 8195 and the, I, the EID table, in this case, VLAN 1034. That concludes the live portion of this video. In this video, we learned about Lisp instance IDs, what they accomplished, and how they're used. We went through a live demonstration of verification commands to determine the Lisp instance ID and correlate them with EID tables. I hope this video was useful for you, and thank you for watching.